We are now going to discuss the proper method of starting up and shutting down pumps. First, steam-driven reciprocating pumps. Next, centrifugal pumps. Procedures that follow are general. You must also know your unit's operating procedures. Before starting any pump, be sure it's ready for safe, efficient operation. Check housekeeping at the pump site. Clear away any tools, boards, cans, etc. that may interfere with your work or the pump's operation. Provide proper lubrication and check operation of automatic lubricators. For example, a steam reciprocating pump may have a force feed lubricator which looks like this. This lubricator is a small pump. A force feed lubricator contains an oil reservoir. Before you start the pump, be sure the oil reservoir is properly filled with the correct lubricating oil. While the pump is running, its rod or shaft operates the lubricator, pumping lubricant to some of the pump's moving parts. Since this power is not available until the pump has started, give the hand crank a few turns before startup. Check other lubrication systems and add oil or grease as required. Before startup, establish cooling water circulation if required. The liquid end of a pump in hot oil service must be heated slowly to avoid damage from uneven expansion. Pumps and lines handling hot oil are often insulated and steam traced. Be sure tracer steam is turned on. You should also use the hot oil itself for warm-up. Close pump drains and crack open the suction valve to let the pump fill slowly with the hot oil. Whatever the pump service, if there is a circulating line between discharge and suction lines, open the valve in the circulating line. Drain condensate from steam cylinders. Since water is not compressible, Starting with water in the cylinders may damage cylinder heads. Open valve in steam exhaust line. Crack open the steam valve to the steam cylinders and allow the steam end to warm up. Caution, where steam exhausts to the atmosphere, hot steam condensate will be emitted during the warm-up period. Close steam drains from steam cylinders. Open the suction valve completely. Slightly open the steam valve to let the pump discharge slowly through the circulating line until the pump is operating smoothly. Then open the discharge valve completely. And close the circulating line valve. The pump should now be running smoothly, but slowly. Open the steam valve gradually to maintain smooth operation while increasing the rate. Now check for leaks in casing, packing, and piping. Stop leaks if possible. If not possible, you may have to shut the pump down for safety. Also check lubrication and add oil or grease as needed. Check packing temperatures. Careful, the steam end is hot. The liquid end, too, if in hot oil service. High packing temperatures may indicate that glands are too tight. If unusual noises develop, check the source. Correct if possible. You may have to shut the pump down to do so. Now turn to workbook number two and complete exercise 16. To shut down a steam-driven reciprocating pump, first close the valve in the steam line to the pump. Then open drains on the steam cylinders and close the steam exhaust valve. Close the pump discharge valve and suction valve. Open a vent on the liquid end 
to avoid excessive pressure from liquid expansion or to avoid excessive vacuum from liquid contraction. Close off cooling water if supplied. If there's danger of freezing, drain the pump's cooling system. If the pump is insulated and steam traced, operating procedures may require leaving steam on. Otherwise, block it off. There may be other exceptions to this shutdown procedure, especially if the pump is to be kept ready as a spare. In that case, operating procedures may require that cooling water, if supplied, be kept on. Or, as previously mentioned, steam tracing may be kept on. The liquid end should not be vented, but both suction and discharge valves should be left open. To keep the steam end in readiness for startup, steam cylinder drains may be kept closed and a steam exhaust valve open. When the steam drains are kept closed and the steam exhaust valve open, the steam valve to the pump should be kept barely cracked open. This practice keeps condensate out of the steam cylinders, preventing cylinder head damage when the pump is started. Now turn to workbook number two, exercise 17.